here nor there. Uh, Titans with the tough loss against the Houston Texans, 26-3. to They've got Jacksonville coming up. We'll talk about both of those things with our guy, Coach Mack. Coach Mack, Happy New Year. How are you, man? Happy New Year to all three of you guys. Uh, uh, Ron Slade, please don't be confused. Uh, Don Davenport sent me a great New Year's picture of Hadley on the couch with her two dogs. That was perfect. That's ex- that's exactly what everybody should have been doing on New on New Year's Day, sitting on the couch with your dogs. On yep, on the day, but not going into the day, Coach Mac. I was fr- frolicking. Ron, Ron, you don't have to say what you're doing, please. Well, he did. He did put this out there. He reported it himself. So, uh, sources close to him indicate that he got home at eight oh four in the morning. You know what, though? I talked to him the other day when I was up there recording something with Mike Keith and Ramon, and, and I did get to talk to him about his uh, association with Morgan Freeman, which I think is really cool. <laughs> yeah, that was a great one right there. Yeah, he was a little nervous there. <laughs> didn't get him to cut anything for the show. That's yeah, man. unfortunate, but whatever. <laughs> he did get some no, that, video. Mm-hmm. That, that is just – that that that's – that. Morgan Freeman is 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 royalty. So to yes, me, that, that that was a very cool Ron Slay. I can see why you would be a little tongue tied there. Yeah. I, the, my first reaction was, didn't you just want him to keep talking? And Slay was like, Yeah, I just started saying like the idiot's little bitty things just to get him to talk. Yeah, just go. Yeah, just to hear the voice. Yeah, yeah. just to hear him. <laughs> just, just to hear him going. Joe Hunk says that they've got a video going out about getting pushed out with Coach Mack and the. Minnesota Vikings. Uh, I was just about to bring that up. It's like trending. Let's hear it, Don. Yeah, it's trending on TikTok. So it's a video saying, oh, I'm watching it right now, Coach Mack. Um, it said, you know, maybe you're too young to remember this, but there was a rule back in the day that, uh, you know, the receiver – didn't have to basically didn't have to have two feet in bounds if they got pushed out it's still a catch Correct. right you remember Correct. that and so in the video uh it's showing look there you are uh it cost the vikings a chance at the playoffs because they lost to their arizona cardinals which there is a young coach mac celebrating in the middle of the field with his hands up in this video that's going all over TikTok. So, do you do you remember that game? Like, fill us all in. Well, what, what the hell? You think I don't remember that? Of I mean, course. It, it, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the first, the first, the first, first of all, first of all, we were about fourteen point underdogs. So we were bad. We were bad, and they were good. There were there were two receivers on the field from Marshall University. We had Nate Poole, and and uh, they had Randy Moss. All right? Okay, so that just kind of tells you how that how that how that evened out. But you know, so you know, I, I I told my guys before the game, I said, "Look, here we're, we're going, we're just what the hell, guys? Let's go play." And so we were we were onside kicking, we were doing everything, going for it on fourth down. <laughs> it was fourth, it was fourth and fourteen because we'd been sacked twice. Uh, Josh McCown's my quarterback, and he's spinning around back there about you know doing about three different spins, and then fires it into the end zone to Nate Poole, and Nate goes up at the corner of the end zone there at Sun Devil Stadium and. Toe drags one and gets pushed out the other. They signal touchdown and then it goes to replay. And so everybody's waiting for the replay and then it goes it then it goes nuts. And yeah, oh yeah, I'm I'm jumping up and down celebrating. I went up in the stands celebrating <laughs> after, after the game. I, I did. I went up in the stands. The security guards there were there were Arizona Highway Patrolmen were my security guards. They were going, Coach Mac, where are you going? I said, Up in the stands. What the, what's going on? I mean, what can they do to me? So I went awesome. up I went up I went up in the stands. It was absolutely outstanding. And the best part of this story is is that everybody stayed in Lambeau Field to watch this thing because <laughs> they knew if the Cardinals, because their game was already over, they had won. And if the Vikings got beat, they were automatically in. Vikings were out. So everybody's sitting in Lambeau watching the whole thing. I mean, it is outstanding. And then I get to the locker, you know, go to the locker room, and it's, you know, it's a madhouse. Go to the press conference and, of course, do my Coach Mac stuff in the press conference. And then go back to the locker room, and uh, one of the, the PR people said, Mac, there's a phone call for you. And I said, okay. So it's, it's like, you know, when the president calls you when you win the Super Bowl. And so I, and I, I got – it was Mike Sherman, who's the head coach at the Packers, and Mark Hatley was his general manager. You know, Hat and I grew up together in Texas. And, and so anyway, they said, Mac, this was so great. You can't believe Lambeau Field was going nuts. I said, we don't know what your plans are because we were out of it. We were out of the playoffs. So I don't know what your plans are, but we'd love to have you come to the playoff game next week as our guest. And I went, you know what, I probably That's can't. Awesome. But I said, how about, how about Nate Poole? 
So they bring Nate Poole and his wife up there, give him the key to the city, and he's waving to people like the Pope out of the, out of the, out of the top of Lambeau Field. Oh, my gosh. That is so great. That was and 2003. Then, then, it was 2003. And then after that, let me just say this after that, for six months after that, I got I got cheese baskets from all from Green Bay fans. Cheese baskets. <laughs> cheese baskets. That's what they do up there, man. They so eat cheese was, and drink it, beer. It, it, so, so do I remember that? Yes, indeed. Oh, that is great. I love it. You can watch the show YouTube, Facebook Live, and Twitch. Twitch, please. Emmett on YouTube. Coach Mack, please explain the Texans' loss and don't sugarcoat it. <laughs> well, they got beat. They got beat in every aspect. The only, the only aspect that the Titans really, I thought, did a nice job of was their red zone defense because that it could have been a lot worse. You know, as far as the scoring opportunities that, that, that Houston had, but they, you know, they really, they really didn't win any phase that you need to win. As far as you know, even though they only, you know, they only had three penalties, but two of the five yard penalties were very, very critical. Uh, you know, they, and they, they couldn't, they couldn't capture the line of scrimmage really. You know, on on either side of it, played decent run defense, better than they did against them the first time, but uh, just. You know, didn't didn't flip enough moments, and I mean that was that that was basically it. And couldn't protect the quarterback, could not protect the quarterback, and got got behind by two scores, and so that those the you know Houston Texans with Matt Burke, you know who spent a lot of years here, you know with Jim Schwartz and I, you know coming into the league, uh, as soon as he gets you down by two scores, he's going to bring the house, and they could not protect the quarterback, so it, it was not a good outcome. Could you find any positives? Besides red yeah, zone I defense, said, <laughs> red zone defense has been amazing. I thought the red zone defense was was really good, and it has been all year. If you kind yeah. of look at where they rank, it is. You know, that's been good. But here's here's the problem. I mean, really, when you look at that game, defense gave up 19 points in that game, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, they gave up 19 points because one of them was a sack fumble for a touchdown. You know that that that, that was given up down there in the, in the low red zone on the on the other end, and so. But you got to play complementary football, which this football team has to do as thin as they are personnel wise, and and they didn't do it. And then you can't let a, an opponent when you're that when you're that your margin for error is that razor thin, guys. You can't let them off the hook with easy things like a three and out in their territory. You're getting ready to win field position, and then you rush the punter. You know, you, you hit the punter, you run in the punter, give them a first down, have a motion penalty that mm-hmm. takes away a first down. Uh, you know, when you're on offense. Those things, when your margin for error is very, very just tight, you can't do it. Uh, in terms of red zone scoring percentage defense, Baltimore Ravens number two in the NFL. Number one, the Tennessee Titans. That's what I. Well, that's pretty good, you know. And 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 to me, and it just points out, it's not. Look, whenever you've lost as many games as the Titans as the Titans have, there's always things that you can look at. I mean, they're, they're, the 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 cupboard here is not completely bare, but it, it's not full. And so you're you're gonna you're gonna have some components that you're gonna keep, and some that you are not. And so, but when it's what do they have now? Seven one score losses. Yeah. When you're playing when you're playing that tight, I mean, you you just can't afford not only the self inflicted wounds, but when the moments come, like you know, like like that first throw that Levis Levis threw, you know, downfield. I mean, that that was just I mean a beautiful beautiful throw. You got to make that catch. You've got that schemed up. You've got that schemed up against quarters coverage. You've got to make that catch. Uh, and so that's the story. Man, that's – well, listen, uh, Coach Mack, when you put a seven offensive linemen out there, like what, what, what's, what's the tip of the, the, the hint to the defense that this is about to be a run and you still don't You're block? It doesn't matter. That, you got, that, you that, got, that bothers you got, me. You got your biggest people out there. You you got to block somebody and move them. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Move them, move them. They only get eleven. You've got eleven, right? Yeah. It's not that you put seven out there and they only get four. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, right. you, but right. also, like the king got hit by five different dudes in the backfield with that. Yeah. You want to, yes? Don't do your job. That's, Just that's, do yeah. your job, mm-hmm. and and if you don't, then somebody else will do it. You know who's been doing his job, Coach? Harold Landry, another productive game. Five tackles, three tackles for a loss, another sack. That's ten and a half on the season. He's a sack and a half away from his career high. And in the 11 games since the bye, Landry has nine and a half sacks in those 11 games. Yeah, and you can tell that he's coming around, you know, from that from that ACL. And, I mean, he's worked really hard at it. And, hey, Brent, you know, by the way, I think those edge rushers have been playing really well this year, all three of them. 
I mean, you know, I, I think all, all all three of those guys have, have played really well. And then, you know, we, you've got two double-digit sackers on that defensive front. Jim Wyatt says they're the only team in the league with that. Well, I believe Jim Wyatt. He doesn't normally lie. And <laughs> well, the, he said, I think, is what he said. But <laughs> I'll go with that, too. <laughs> so anyway, that, 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 to, to me, as I say, it's it's not it's not a complete throwaway. But you, you, we know the issues with this football team. And first of all, I mean, here's the key phrase for the next five months after they beat the Jaguars: talent acquisition. That's mm-hmm. the key phrase. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, Baldy yeah. always does his Baldy's breakdowns. Here's here's a positive, right? And um, his one from. I think it was yesterday or today mm-hmm. was Otis yesterday, Reese. Was, yep. mm-hmm. Yeah, for the it. for the Titans and and what he's been able to do. What have you seen from him? You know what, Don? That dude's a heat seeking missile. He really is. <laughs> heat he is seeking missile. He is a heat seeking missile. I mean, he's like a scud missile. He doesn't care, and he will he will he he plays with speed and he plays with violence. And 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 when I say violence about defensive players, that's a compliment. Yeah. Because I mean, he's he's not afraid to, to to throw himself into the mix, and he gets there fast. I like what I've seen from him. As I said, some of these guys, I mean, you're get you're going way deep into into a roster and into you know some people that weren't even on a roster yeah. that are at least getting a chance to show what they can do. So you ask me, I, I think what he's done is earn himself a chance to at least. And again, I don't make any personnel decisions anymore. I used to make them all the time. I don't make them now, but at least a chance. To be con- to be considered to come back and develop a little bit more because he's a he's a run and hit dude and I like that. Yeah, um, Baldy NFL on on Twitter if people want to see because he runs through people when you talk yeah. about violence that that's what he does and and the play that really stuck out to me was on the reverse where he completely changed dire- he was going with the flow of traffic completely changed r- direction and went over there and not just made the tackle knocked the hell out of the guy. Well, yeah, and he's and he's and he's willing. As I said, he is willing to to to. And, and Scud missile is it. You know, you shoot those Scud missiles off. They're they're guided. They they get the target and they're zeroed in on it. And they don't stop for anything. And that's what he does. And I like that. I, in fact, I like Baldy's breakdowns. I talk to Baldy all the time when he's doing national radio. If he's there, you know, when I'm there, because he's he was one of the favorite dudes. That, you know, when he would was was doing television. When I was a head coach out there at Arizona, we'd sit for a long. Baldy knows what he's talking about. He really does. I, 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 I respect Baldy's uh, thoughts. I think uh, Mike Keith said Otis Reese had ten tackles on thirty-four mm-hmm. snaps. That's that's uh, yeah, he's getting to it. He's active. That's yeah, production. That's production. Well, yeah, that's production. That is that is that's production, and that's what you're looking for. And you've got to, you've got to give him credit too because. You know his defensive front that's in front of him is a little bit decimated by, mm-hmm. you know, by dudes. But he's still he's still getting it done. So you know, I think I think he and Aziz both play the run, you know, very well. Their run defense is ranked up there pretty good too. But look, guys, it's about winning ball games, yeah. winning ball games. You yeah. you know, uh, you know all the figures you want to put out there. We can I can after this is over, I can do a compilation on what. And it doesn't matter what I say, but there's some good parts to this. And uh, their run defense is another good part of this. Yeah, I, I remember. I remember Coach Mack being a part of a uh, uh, a team that we lost seven games by I think a total of thirteen points, and mm. it was all in a row. And it's like, dog, what do you do? But you, but one thing about it, when you go back and review the film, you could always see the effort that was being given, and it may come down to a. You know, a, a a bad call here or a bad execution there, but it was stuff there that could go. be fixed. Um, I think when you look at this Titans team, you are starting to see guys that you can feel the cupboard with. But when you talk about going to get talent, like where would you start with that if you if you if you had a selection for you? Well, there's two places you start, Ron. I mean, there's there's, there's two places. I mean, first of all, let's just talk in general terms. Yeah, you've got you got free agency and you got the draft, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, you got free agency in the draft, and you're and you're going to have two cycles of that to to get this thing, you know, back to where you want to get it to where this thing was, you mm-hmm. know, a, a little less than eighteen months ago. Yeah. Now the thing, and and so both of those both of those areas, and you're going to have free agent. You have money to spend. Yeah. You've got money to spend, but you've got to spend it wisely. You can't just you know be like a drunken sailor and go throwing money around, <laughs> you know, for for everything. You you can't do that. Yeah. You just can't. You and, and they won't. They will not. Right. But 
that's important. And then, you know, your, 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 your draft evaluation and then, and then your, your draft picks are going to be a very, 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 very fundamental to what goes on. And, you know, you're, they're, they're going to attack all the positions, but you know they're going to attack the offensive line, right. and you know they're going to attack the secondary. Yeah. So what is your hit radius you think you need to be coming into this, uh, going into this offseason, like 80, hit on at least 80%? Uh, like, what's what's the, you know, when you go through this situation? Well, what? now, wait, wait, Ron, Ron, Ron let, me, let, me, let me help you here. Okay, <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm trying to get to, Coach Mac. Talk to him. Well, I, I know that. And, again, you're Morgan Freeman's friend, so I'll talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are boys now. That's my guy. <laughs> <laughs> the, thing, the, the thing about it is, when you're when you're making these decisions, you don't yeah. ever say, "Well, you know what? I, 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 some of these guys, I think, are going to be good, but we'll take this one anyway." That won't be. You don't right. do that. Yeah, it won't be a hundred, but it won't be a hundred percent either. It never is a hundred. Mm-hmm. It can't be a hundred because you're dealing with human beings on both sides of the equation. But to get out right? a hole, it at least got to be I seventy, think, though. Well, you you got to hit down. on some of the right positions, right Ron. Okay. You've got to hit on some of the right positions. You okay. can't miss on some of those positions, and that's what can happen. Gotcha. And and to me, you you look at this this draft class, this this last draft class that we've had. I mean, those guys were contributors. You got some contrib. I mean, it makes me sick that Colton Dow got hurt. Yeah, me too. It just mm-hmm. makes me sick. Mm-hmm. They all contributed, that- right? You're right, though. Yep. That hit rate on that, hundred yep. percent. Well, correct. And and but but it just you know, and you so can't far. you can't get away from the injury. It's just it's part of the violence of this game. Yeah. But your evaluation process shows that it was on track yeah. for that last. So you've got to put that into into place. Mm-hmm. And because of the fact that you haven't won enough games, you're going to have higher picks in every round. And so you need to be able to take advantage of that because you don't want to you don't want to earn those high picks very often. Yeah. But when you do have them, you've got to take advantage of them. There he is. He's Coach Mac doing Coach Mac Thanks, things Coach every Mac. Wednesday at three twenty on three HL. And now we're all just two degrees of separation from Morgan Freeman. Thanks to this life. I'm, uh, listen, <laughs> next spring spring hey, dinner, Coach Mac. I'm gonna I'm give him a you, shout. You you guys, you get him in here. For that, for, get him in here. Get him in here. I, I, I mean, know my boy have a field day with that one. All right, Coach. Have a have a great call on uh, on Sunday. Thanks, guys. guys. You're the best. See right, you. Thank see you. you. Thanks, Coach.